Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. Inductivity switch is an integral part of any inductive DC to DC converter. In this video, I want to look at an inductor and a switch combination and see how to analyze them. Let's first look at an inductor followed by a switch which is connected to ground. Other end of the inductor is connected to a DC supply. The switch is a very low resistance switch and we will assume that it's a zero ohm switch. When switch is closed, we essentially have this inductor between the supply and the ground. And according to this equation, we'll have a linearly increasing current into this inductor. The question that we want to answer is what happens when this switch is opened? Does voltage across the inductor become zero? What happens to the current? Essentially, what happens to the voltage of the other side of the inductor? Now, we know that inductor current cannot change suddenly. So it has to be voltage. One popular way to analyze this situation is like this. Imagine there is a resistance in parallel with inductor. Next, the current which was flowing into the switch is directed into this resistor. As a result of this current, there will be a voltage developed across this resistor with the shown polarity. And since in this scenario, bottom side voltage is more positive as compared to the top side voltage, the bottom side voltage will go high. In ideal case, when there is no other component in this circuit, you will have a voltage impulse at this node. But in actual circuit, this increasing voltage will turn on another path for current to flow. In case of boost circuit, this path is through a diode into a capacitor. Also, rate of increase of this voltage will not be instantaneous. In reality, there will be a parasitic capacitor at this node, which will regulate the rate of increase along with the value of the current. All right. Although this imaginary resistance approach is a perfectly valid approach to solve these kind of problems, I often find it confusing. So when faced with this kind of situations, I use another approach. I use so-called volt second balance approach. According to this concept, in steady state, the average voltage across inductor must be zero. If this is not so, according to this equation, current will build up across inductor. And since current cannot keep building, according to this equation, the average voltage must be zero. To further simplify things, in most of the scenarios, the voltage across inductor is DC voltage. So this integration is converted into a multiplication. So basically, we take the product of the DC voltage and the time the inductor is spent across this DC voltage and sum it across the whole period. In this case, we have just two times an on time when switch is on and an off time when switch is off. And basically, this is the equation that I use to work out the problem. In this equation, both T on and T off are obviously positive because they are the time. As a result, in order to make the whole sum equal to zero, one of the voltage is positive and other must be negative. And that is the trick. So if the voltage across inductor is positive in T on cycle, it must be negative in T off cycle. In other words, polarity across inductor reverses. So let's work out the problem again. When switch is on, the top voltage of the inductor is positive. So when switch turns off, bottom voltage will become more positive. And as a result, bottom voltage has to go high. Let's take another example. This structure is same as the previous one, except I have interchanged the position of the switch and the inductor. Again, when switch is closed, top voltage is positive as compared to the bottom voltage. So when the switch is open, bottom voltage has to be more positive. And this can only happen if top voltage becomes negative. And that means this voltage flies low. This in fact is the case with an inverting bug boost converter. I hope you get the general idea. The voltage across inductor will try to switch the polarity. And only one end can move because the other end is tied to a fixed supply. In the switched converter, the current will find a path to flow eventually. And the combination of this switch and that path dictates what kind of converter it is. For example, in a bug converter, the inductor is connected between a DC source and the output voltage when switch is on. There is a big capacitor on the output voltage and hence it behaves as another DC source. Also VDC is greater than V out. So when switch is on or closed, the switch side is more positive as compared to the V out side. And when switch opens, it tries to become more negative. 
this falling switch voltage is caught by this diode and that is the basic buck converter for you. In fact, you can use this volt second balance to derive the transfer function of all these converters in steady state. But that is for another video. Whenever I think of an inductor in such situations, I try to also think of a capacitor in equivalent situation. It is because inductor and capacitors are dual components. As a result, I get a much better understanding when I look at it from both perspectives. So let's try to build an equivalent situation from the capacitor's point of view. From a capacitor's point of view, a DC voltage source will be replaced by a DC current source. And a switch in series will be replaced by a switch in parallel. A switch on in inductor case will be equivalent to a switch off in capacitor case. So in capacitor's case, we'll be charging the capacitor using a DC current source. And the voltage will ramp up linearly. In an ideal case, when we opened the switch in the inductor's case, we saw an impulse in voltage in opposite direction. In capacitor's case, when we close the switch, we will see the impulse of current in opposite direction. This is because in this ideal case, the voltage across capacitor disappears instantaneously. And it can only happen with an impulse current. But let's be more practical. We said there will be a parasitic capacitor in parallel with the inductor. And this parasitic capacitor will help in smoothen out the voltage ramp. In capacitor case, there will be a parasitic inductance in series with the capacitor. And it will smoothen out the current ramp. Volt second balance of an inductor is equivalent to current second balance of a capacitor. This ampere second balance is better known as the charge balance of the capacitor. And it means that in steady state, the total charge in and out of capacitor should be zero. Otherwise, capacitor will keep building the voltage. Okay, so here we saw that inductors are nothing unique in their behavior. In fact, they are quite similar to capacitor. And that is all I have for this video. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.